Hello, I'm Jamila Musaeva, an international social etiquette consultant and the author of the book Etiquette, the least you need to know. Some of you that follow me on my Instagram account already know that I have published my second book, which is called Afternoon Tea Etiquette, the least you need to know. I'm sharing this story because I think it helps people to understand that you can find inspiration in very little things that surround you and therefore you must remember that whatever you surround yourself with, make sure that it inspires you, it sparks joy with you like Marie Kondo says and brings some positivity in your life. This book, just like my first book, is an actual true Azerbaijani product because it was written by me. It was illustrated by a beautiful Azerbaijani artist, young, upcoming, named Ralph. And it was printed by an Azerbaijani publishing house called Teas Press. For those of you inquiring about where to buy the book, the book is currently only in sale in Azerbaijan in all Libra bookstores as well as some other local bookstores. I might be able to accept some international orders soon and I will let you know as soon as that becomes an option on my Instagram account. So if you haven't followed me, make sure that you follow me and I'll link it down below in the description box. By the way, I've already done a video on an afternoon tea tradition and I filmed that in Four Seasons Baku and there I'm showing how you should behave yourself at an afternoon tea in a restaurant, so a more formal occasion. If you haven't checked that video out, make sure that you do, I'll link it down below in the description box. This video is a little bit more different, it's more informal and more homey, more cozy, so I'll show you how to prepare your own afternoon tea party at home. Now let me show you how to prepare this beautiful table for a guest of yours. In today's video, we're going to be preparing a little afternoon tea for just two guests. Imagine you have a friend coming over and you want to have an afternoon tea party. So let's imagine that's the day and here I'll be showing you some of the simplest and the most traditional recipes for an afternoon tea. I will start with a salmon sandwich. For that I'm going to use a white bread. So I'm going to take two pieces of white bread, I'm going to put them side to side. Then I'm going to apply some cream cheese on both sides of the bread. So this is the cream cheese that I have. I like to have a lot of cream cheese, so I'll apply a lot of it, but it really depends on how much you like and perhaps your guests like. So I'm gonna apply plenty of both on both sides. And then I'm gonna take this little knife and spread it all evenly on both sides of the bread. Make it yummy. And here as well. If I have a little bit too much on one side, then I'll apply a little bit on the other as well. So, nice and neatly, evenly spread. I make sure that I apply it to edges as well because I like when my sandwich is covered in cream cheese. So, now I'm gonna add a little bit of salmon. Uh, I'll just add two pieces on, on one side. You can choose and pick which side you want to apply it to, but I like to keep it only on one side because I don't want it to be I don't want it to be too chunky. Actually let me add another one. This is the third one. I'll add some salt and pepper. Depends on how much you like. You can season it according to your own taste. I like a lot of pepper, a bit of salt. And I always like to add a bit of a lemon and then it's again up to you. Close this. Press it. Get a little bit chunky. Press it. Press it firmly. The most important step here is to make sure that you get rid of the crust. So I'm gonna, just going to cut this crust. Just get rid of it because that's the right way of eating the afternoon tea sandwich. Okay, now with whatever remains, I'll have to cut either into a rectangle or a triangle. I like to keep the sandwich in the form of a rectangle because that way it's much easier. So I'll just cut it in a half in order to get a rectangle. As we know, with well, all the sandwiches, we all place them on the very first tier of the three tier rack. So I'm gonna pick the sandwich and place it right here. 
The second sandwich is going to be a cucumber and cream cheese sandwich. It's a very easy, very light and fresh one and perfect if you have a vegetarian guest coming over. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to opt for a brown sandwich bread because I think it tastes better with the cucumber. So I'm going to put the two pieces of bread side to side again. Going to take some cream cheese. As you can tell, I'm using a lot. Then again, it's up to you and your friend's taste if you know what they like. So I'm gonna spread it all evenly. And cucumbers are great with cream cheese because the cream cheese adds a little bit of a salty taste to it and gives that extra zest to it. So just spread it all equally to the edges as well, just like with a salmon. I like to make sure that the bread is fully covered in cream cheese. And then I'm gonna take some cucumber that was already thinly sliced that I prepared for this video. So I'm gonna put it, actually, I'll have to cut this. So I'm gonna take this cucumber and cut it because it's too long for this bread and place it nice and neatly here. Take it here. I think three is enough. Again, you can add some pepper. I like pepper a lot, so I add it everywhere. You can add just a little bit of salt because cucumbers love to have a little bit of salt on them. And then I'm going to close the sandwich again press a little bit so the juice is released and then I will cut the sides, the crust of it with a cucumber sandwich I like to cut it into a triangle because it's easy that way and I like to leave my triangles quite big so this is how I'm going to place them on the rack Actually, I'm going to put them to this side and this one's to this side. So it's alternating. The last sandwich is super easy and lots of kids love eating it. Adults also love eating it and it's great for people who don't like to eat meat or fish but are eating eggs. So this will require you to hard boil eggs before. So this is an egg that hard boiled before. Um, I'm going to use one egg. So one egg per sandwich I think is enough. I'm going to mash it first. Make sure that you mash it well because that way it's going to be better and it depends on your taste really but if you don't like it to be too chunky then make sure that you mash it a lot. If you like to leave some chunks then just do it lightly, depends on what you like. So once I've mashed it I'm going to add some mayonnaise, just a little bit, actually maybe another spoon of it. And then I'm gonna add some mustard. I like a lot of mustard. As you can tell, I like all everything that's spicy. And then I'm gonna add some salt and some pepper, lots of pepper. And salt. You can drizzle a little bit of uh, lemon juice if you like depends on what you prefer. I like lemon juice so I'm gonna add a little bit of that. Mash it well. I'm gonna take a white bread again because I think it tastes better with an egg. Open it. Spread this egg salad on one piece of the bread. Then distribute it evenly, making sure that I cover the whole bread, especially the edges, as I always say, I like it when it's everywhere, not just in the middle. So spread it evenly and nicely. Cover it, make sure to press it so it's nice and firm. And then cut the crust again, the edges. And then I'm gonna cut it into a triangle because I like the shape of it. 
and I think it's easier to eat it that way. So nicely and easily done. I can place it alternatively. So alternating between sandwiches because I think it adds to the color of it and then everyone can pick a sandwich on the side. Now that we have finished preparing the sandwiches and place them on the first tier of the three tier rack, on the second rack we're gonna place our scones. These are the scones that I've baked yesterday and they didn't come out as fluffy and puffy as they usually do. But anyways, this is what I'm having right now and this is what I will place here. I'll place here right side by side and I will leave some room for the jam that I'll be serving the scones with. So here I have some jam. I'm gonna transfer it to a little serving tray placed here. Add some more. It's only gonna be a party of two people, but I'm gonna add some more, make it a generous portion. And then this is a little serving spoon that I'm gonna place right next to it, right here, and place it on the side of the second rack. Next, for the third tier, I shared some recipe that's a favorite of Queen Elizabeth and Prince William, but for this video, I just bought some desserts from a local store and I'm gonna place them on the last rack here. So I'm gonna place chocolate, chocolatey brownie biscuit here, little fancy dessert, green one here, and I'm gonna add the eclair here. So here we have our three-tiered rack for the afternoon tea. Sandwiches on the bottom, scones on the second rack, and dessert on the very last rack. Next, to be served with a tea, I'm gonna have this little bowl that's meant for sugar cubes. I'm gonna fill it up with some sugar cubes. Add this here, maybe some more, and that's enough. Close it, add some sugar tongs that I'm gonna place right by the side and serve it as well. Next, I have the milk pitcher that I'm gonna fill up with some milk. This is just a regular milk, but you can add any kind of milk that you like or specify which one your guest would like to drink. So, this is for milk. Next, I'm gonna have this little lemon that I'm gonna slice into thin pieces and serve it with the tea. So whoever likes to take their tea with lemon can do so. Add some more here, here. Maybe get rid of it, of the pits. and serve it with a lemon fork. To add up some more beauty to our afternoon tea table, I'm gonna add some flowers. So here I have this little vase that I have bought specifically for the afternoon tea. And here I have some flowers that I will have to cut and adjust according to our vase. So I'm gonna cut it Oh, how lovely. Maybe I'll need some more flowers. So add some more. Like that. And voila. How can we have our wonderful afternoon tea without preparing the tea? So let's go and prepare our lovely teapot. Because we're going to be having black tea, I have a little cheat sheet here that shows which tea should be brewed at what degree. So I'm going to set the temperature. Uh, it's already at 98, so I'm going to press it once and wait for it to start boiling. The final step in preparation for our afternoon tea is preparing the actual tea. So I'm going to take this lovely teapot and I'm gonna pour some hot water inside and sort of prepare the pot for the tea. I'm gonna pour just a little bit, not too much, it's just to make sure that the pot is ready to receive the tea. I'm 
gonna swirl it around a little bit. Pour it out. Next thing is, an important rule for the afternoon tea is knowing how much tea you need to add to the pot. So the rule is, you add one teaspoon for the pot itself. So one teaspoon for the pot itself and then one teaspoon for each guest. Because it's only two of us having the afternoon tea, I'm gonna add two teaspoons. One and two. Then I'm gonna pour the water that was boiled at 98 degrees. And close it. So the tea is getting ready. For those who are wondering why did we add so many teaspoons, especially if the pot is small and we don't have that much water, it's because there are people that would like to take their tea strong. In that case, they're gonna fill up half of their cup with the tea from the teapot. But if they like it weak, they're gonna add a little bit of tea and mix it with hot water. I will be serving hot water from the kitchen so I won't place it right on the table. But when you are enjoying afternoon tea in a restaurant, you will be served some hot water in a pot separately. So I've placed the three-tiered rack that I've prepared with sandwiches, and scones and desserts. I've placed a teapot with a little holder underneath, a milk pitcher, a tea strainer, lemon that we cut already and serving with a special lemon fork, little ball for sugar cubes and sugar tongs. I've placed a little plate with a napkin with a dessert fork and knife as well as with a teaspoon, a cup and a plate and a beautiful flower arrangement. I've also placed my new book as a coffee table edition because why not? Thank you so much for watching this video until the end and I hope you enjoyed it and find some useful ideas of how to host your own afternoon tea at home. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!